What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're gonna make our own flyer mockups. So before we head into the video, I just wanted to let you know that you can get the Photoshop files for this project by becoming a patron of mine. Check out the link in the description down below or stick around until the end of the video to learn more. All right, everyone, so we're gonna be making our own flyer mockups today. So both of these flyers, this one and this one, are actually made in other tutorials. Anyways, you're gonna need a camera for this if you want the best quality, but you can also just use your camera phone. The principle of this video is very easy. Get a piece of paper, make a similar rectangle to it and warp that rectangle so the shape matches with the piece of paper and adding some highlights and shadows. But let's start with the pictures. All right, so these are the two pictures that we're gonna be using and I'm gonna use two different methods. First method is a little bit easier, but it gets a little bit less quality results. And the second method is a lot better, but it takes a little bit more time. All right, so for this first method, you're gonna need a straight piece of paper. As you can see in the first picture here, uh, our piece is you know, fairly straightforward. You know, there aren't any folds in it compared to the second one here. Uh, so that's what you need to take into account. So the second thing you're gonna need to know is the size of your paper. Here in the Netherlands, we use A4 and A3 paper, and this is an A3 size paper. And the reason we're gonna need that is because we need to make a rectangle that has the same aspect ratio as the piece of paper. All right, so based on the size of your canvas, you're gonna need to do this a little bit differently, but for now, uh, just bear with me as I'm making this rectangle. All right, so let's just go to the rectangle tool, use a red fill or any color basically would work. And if you click once on the screen, we get this option window. All right, so essentially with the width and the height, we're gonna need to enter in the values that come with uh, the you know A4 papers. And in our case, the A4 papers are 297 centimeters or millimeters by 420 millimeters. And as you can see, these uh, aspects are in pixels. So, you know, making this is gonna be looking a little bit small. So what I tend to do is put a zero behind both of those numbers. Uh, but as you can see on the side here, I'm not sure if you can really see it that well, but this makes it a really, really big rectangle. It's actually bigger than the picture here. So now I'm just gonna press slash two, which divides the number by two. So essentially we now have a rectangle with the same aspect ratio as an A3 paper. And the next thing we're gonna do is immediately right click on our layer here and click on convert to smart object. So essentially what we're gonna do now is use the perspective warp tool to warp this onto uh, the piece of paper in the photo. So let's lower the opacity so we can still see what's behind our picture here. And what I'm also gonna do is go to view, guides, new guides from shape. So now we have some guides on every edge uh, of this uh, rectangle. Now next we're gonna go to edit, perspective warp. And if you've never worked with the perspective warp tool before, don't worry, it's fairly straightforward. First thing we're gonna need to do is draw a rectangle around our rectangle, as you can see. So here in the top, we can see layout and warp. We don't really need to do anything further in the layout, so let's just go to warp. And I'm gonna hide the guides for a second. And you can do that by pressing control and the parentheses, uh, if that's the correct English word, I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, the thing we need to do is drag these points towards the corners of our uh, poster here. And you can zoom in a little bit further and you're gonna make sure that the corners are actually overlapping the corners of the paper just a little bit. And if it's hard to see, you can just lower the opacity a little bit further. All right, and if you think you're satisfied, you can just click on the checkbox here at the top. And now we can put the opacity back to 100%. All right, so the first step is done. So the object is warped to the position. So the next thing we're gonna do is make sure that we can actually put a poster file in this. And if we double click on the thumbnail on the rectangle here in the layer menu, it opens a separate Photoshop file, which is the rectangle that we initially made. All right, I'm gonna drop in the flyer that I made in a previous tutorial and scale it up so that it fits right in the uh, screen, I guess. <laughs> and then we're gonna save this project and we can just click away. And as you can see, now the flyer is, uh, well, looking kind of realistic already. Um, but obviously this looks really, really flat now and photoshopped in, and that's not what we want. So the next step is basically adding highlights and shadows and, you know, modifying the edge just a little bit. So let's hide the rectangle for now. So we're gonna need to make a selection of the piece of paper here. And we can do that with a couple of things, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna do it really quickly. 
I go into select, select a mask, and drawing a rectangle here, removing this little part here. And I'm going to add some contrast to make the edges a little bit harder and then feather that a little bit. And as you can see, this doesn't really make the best corners. So let me just zoom in a little bit and see if we can add that last part of the edge. So you can obviously do this yourself uh, and then, you know, you can make the edge as detailed as possible. But for this, you know, I, it's just to save time here a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do it that detailed. Anyways, the next thing we're going to do is pressing Ctrl or Command J on our keyboard to duplicate a selection of the layer. So now on layer one, we have a separate part of the paper here. And we're going to rename this to clipping. And then we're going to duplicate it two more times. So, and we're gonna name the top one highlights and the bottom one, I'm gonna name shadows. And we can just hide these for now and move the rectangle down below and make sure that this is clipping. And you can kind of see the difference here uh, with the shadow part here. Basically by using the clipping mask which you can do by pressing Alt or Option on your keyboard and then clicking on the like line between the two layers, as you can see here. Basically, now our flyer is only visible wherever uh, the clipping uh, layer is. So if I move the clipping layer to the right, as you can see, it's only visible wherever this layer is. So this gets rid of the very hard edges here that you could see without the clipping mask. All right, so now for the lighting. Let's make the shadow layer visible. And we're going to put this in a group and we'll call that shadows as well. Then we're going to go to the adjustments window, which you can find under window adjustments. And we're going to add in a curves. All right, so now we're also going to be needing a clipping mask for the curves layer here. So again, I'm holding Alt or Option on my keyboard, holding my mouse in between the two layers and then clicking. So now the curves only applies to this shadow layer instead of everything in the whole picture. And we're going to grab the left arrow here and we're going to move that to the right a little bit. Like this. And as you can see, the layer is getting a little bit blue and that's because there are a little bit of like vague color details in this layer. We're going to be removing those by pressing Command or Control U on our keyboard and removing the saturation of the shadows. So now we have a black and white shadow layer, if that makes sense. The next thing I'm going to do is double click on the shadow group, change the blend mode to multiply and lowering the opacity until we have something that looks like a little bit realistic. I reckon something like this should do the trick. And as you can see, this makes a pretty big difference already. Now we're going to do the same thing with the highlights. The highlights are a little bit more complicated because we have to add some more contrast as the paper is white, but it shouldn't be too complicated. So again, we'll group these highlights in a group that's called highlights as well. I'm going to go to adjustments, add a curves adjustment and make sure that the curves is clipping to the highlights. And you can also do it by right clicking and then clicking on create clipping mask. Where is it? Here. And again, I'm going to just move those like uh, parts in. And we're also going to be moving the right slider to the left a little bit. And then on the highlights, I'm going to double click and change the blend mode to lighten and then also lowering the opacity a little bit. And as you can see, uh, this is going to be looking a little bit funky. So now we're going to need to go back into our curves and start modifying the uh, layers here a little bit. And you can also see like a blue haze, I feel like, and that's because we haven't really removed the color yet. So again, we're gonna select the highlights layer, press Ctrl or Command U, and remove all of the saturation. And that changes a lot already. So now we're just gonna play with the curves here until we have something that we're satisfied with. And I think something like this uh, looks realistically enough for now. Maybe a little bit more highlights. Okay, so the method of the second one is uh, fairly similar, but we're gonna use another method to warp in uh, the rectangle. So again, we're gonna make a rectangle and we're gonna make it the same aspect ratio because the paper in the picture is also A3 format. All right, so now what we're gonna do is convert this thing to a smart object 
It's very important, don't forget that. Lower the opacity a little bit, and then we're going to go press Ctrl or Command T on our keyboard, which brings up the free transform menu. And by holding Ctrl or Command on the points on the edges here, we're just gonna move those to the edges of the paper. And you might be wondering if you can just use this for uh, the first method as well, instead of the perspective warp tool, and you're correct, you can actually use that as well. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, I just wanted to showcase that there are multiple ways to do things in Photoshop and the Perspective Warp tool can be a very useful tool in some cases. Maybe not the best method for this video, but um, you know, I thought I'd just showcase it if you've never seen it. Alright, so don't worry about the folds here a little bit too much because we're going to actually fix that. So next, we're going to go to Edit, Transform, Warp. And as you can see, uh, this is a method that we can use to kind of like morph, well, a rectangle around a folded rectangle, if that makes sense. So the way this works is you have these outer points that you can move, as well as these handles that you can move. And before we continue with this, it's very, very important that you always keep taking a look at the grid here. Uh, this grid is there so you can see properly you know, how the piece of paper would fold if there would be a design on this rectangle. So on the top here, you have these split uh, options and the one on the right here is one we're going to use a lot. If we just click that once, you can see that we can actually add in uh, a different part of the line here. So if we click on this once, you can see that we now have the outer points here as well. So we can use that to drag these up. And then we're going to also add another one here around here and move these down. So the way I'm determining these points is basically seeing where the end of the the fold would be. So for example here, if the fold goes down here, that means that somewhere around here would be the middle of uh, these two points, if that makes sense. So the middle ground here would be somewhere like here. So I'm just go click and then moving it down a little bit. And you can also see it on the grid a little bit. It looks uh, more 3D uh, if that makes sense. You know, it's actually following the uh, lines here. So I'm actually going to queue a time lapse here uh, in order to, you know, actually fix and adjust these points. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to show you a little bit uh, on these handles because it's very important to keep these handles in a position where they aren't going to overlap each other. It's basically the same thing with the Pentel and Illustrator if you've worked with that. Uh, basically, you don't want to do something like this because if you look at the grid, uh, if these points start overlapping, you might line up something correctly, but the perspective is going to be all messed up. So you don't really want that. If for these pieces of paper, it's well probably a little bit straightforward, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. So let me just cue the time lapse and uh, I'll show you how to, you know, uh, make this a little bit more detailed. All right, so uh, I'm pretty satisfied with this thing so far. Um, there's maybe a little bit of a weird bulge going on here. So I might just wanna do, uh, change these to still, yeah. Anyways, uh, if you're satisfied, you can just click the checkbox and uh, let's load in our file, shall we? So we're gonna double click again on the thumbnail and we're just gonna drop in our flyer. And as you can see, it already like warps nicely with uh, the rest of the design, but we're gonna lower op the opacity a little bit. And as you can see, it's a little bit, uh, well, not realistic enough. So let's do the same method that we just, uh, used earlier in the video. And we're gonna do it a little bit quicker this time. I'm gonna make a quick selection of our paper. I'm gonna rename that to clipping. I'm gonna duplicate it twice, name the top one highlights and the middle one shadows. Clip the poster mockup actually uh, towards the uh, clipping. And then I'm gonna group the shadow and remove the color. And I'm gonna do the same with the highlights. And we're gonna add in a curves adjustment, clip that to the shadows. 
add in some contrast. As you can see with this one, we might need to uh, crunch the light values as well a little bit. So the main thing you want to keep in mind here is the lighter the color, the more invisible it's going to become when you put the blend mode to multiply. So as you can see, if we remove this to the back, it's going to be really dark. So yeah, I would advise you to play around with this until you understand what you're doing in the curves, because that's very, very important. So if you're actually uh, wanting to learn more about blend modes, I actually also have a tutorial about that on my channel. Uh, it learns you mainly how to you work with textures, but yeah, the essence is basically learning how blend modes work in Adobe Photoshop. So let's lower the opacity a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing with the highlights here. All right, so this is basically after and this is before. So you can see quite a little bit of difference in there. And a nice touch is that also adds in the grain that's actually in the picture here. Um, because you might have already noticed, I'm not a good photographer. This is just a picture that I took with my camera, but I, I'm not skilled at photography whatsoever. Uh, anyways, so yeah, there you have it. Two methods to create your own poster or flyer mockups. As I mentioned before, if you become a patron of mine, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials a 15% discount in my asset web store, and an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord community. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos, including the video on how I made this ray flyer that you can see on the screen right now. So a huge shout out to my patrons, because without them, I wouldn't actually be able to give you guys free tutorials on a weekly basis. So thank you so much. If you want to become a patron yourself, there's a link down in the description. And if you don't have the budget to support Dreadlabs, you can also just leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. It does a lot. So with all of that being said, this was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.